You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. All right, Black and White Sports supporters, let's talk about Russell Wilson because we've got yet another scathing story coming out. This time by way of one of the best NFL insiders out there, Adini Kikawala. And man, it is some peel back the curtain action on exactly. And, and I've tried to tell people this, you know, we've covered this Broncos, Russell Wilson, Seahawks, Sean Payton thing uh, since well before last season started. And one of the reasons Payton got hired to begin with was to find out Come in, do an evaluation on Russell Wilson, and figure out if his career is worth continuing on here in Denver. Now, keep in mind, one of the reasons they wanted to get rid of him in Seattle was the fact that he did not want to run the offense. He wanted to ad-lib everything, and it was driving Pete Carroll and John Snyder nuts and had been for quite some time. And remember, it's just been about a month where Sean Payton was point-blank asked, was it a tough decision to eat an $85 million dead cap hit to get rid of Russell Wilson? And he answered immediately and abruptly by saying, no, just that quick. And now we have this that has come out. And I understand Yard Barker is saying, analyst is making a bold claim. Well, I can tell you right now, if this NFL insider said this, this particular one, then she has been told, told point blank that this is exactly what was going down. And we've talked about the fact that Russell just couldn't run this offense that Sean Payton had. And she also talks about exactly how Sean Payton is really viewed around the league, especially as an offensive mind. Look, Sean Payton's considered a top three or four offensive mind in all of the NFL, period. And he's got the ring to prove it, and he's got the previous teams prior to that to prove it with Parcells and Belichick and all these being around. The Giants, back in the day, the Steelers made seismic waves in the NFL world with their announcement of the signing of veteran quarterback Russell Wilson to a one-year deal. Wilson's journey leading up to this moment was rife with twists and turns. Initially traded to the Broncos in the early stages of 2022, Wilson inked a mammoth five-year, $245 million contract with lofty expectations of propelling his new team to Super Bowl glory. However, reality failed to align with those lofty aspirations as Wilson and the Broncos struggled to find their footing on the field. Despite his elite status, or former elite status, but they say elite status, okay, Wilson endured a rapid descent from grace, becoming the subject of internet memes, criticism as the team stumbled to 11 and 19 under his leadership. Now in a stunning turn of events, Wilson finds himself donning the black and gold of the Steelers, poised for redemption and shot at regaining glory in Steel City. i got to tell you, after reading this, combined with everything else we've ever talked about, I, I really wonder if we won't see my prediction come true, which by the, the end conclusion of, of Game 8, Game 8, Justin Fields will be the starting quarterback for the Steelers because I think this kind of thing is going to drive Mike Tomlin crazy too. I believe that. I just don't think he's going to have any use for it, especially at Wilson's age. That's the kind of thing you hear about from a first or second year quarterback that's not putting the time in. As analysts and fans like to dissect the offseason moves across the AFC North, CBS Sports Analyst Adini Kikawala weighed in during an appearance on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. She said shed some light on the Steelers' bold acquisition of Wilson and its potential implications for their, their division rivals, the Browns. Quote, he was constantly climbing out of the back of the pocket. No doubt. No doubt. 
Timing and rhythm offense, he wouldn't let it go. He had wide open receivers he was ignoring. He got sacked a ton. He struggled with snap counts. He struggled with snap counts. He couldn't manage or handle the play calling. I mean, it's crazy. They went from putting a wristband on him to by the end of the season, all the play calls had to be two words. And everybody else was required to know what the play call was. So they were giving Russell Wilson special treatment because he couldn't figure out the play calling and the snap counts. I mean, the wristband is the cheese sheet. And that wasn't working. Yikes. This is like a scathing indictment of his football acumen. That's crazy. Kikawala underscored the significance of Sean Payton's decision to part ways with Wilson by highlighting the head coach's track record of success with various quarterbacks. Wilson's coach's readiness to invest considerable resources to ensure his departure speaks volumes about how negatively he was perceived in Peyton's eyes. This is her quote. There is a very, 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 very valid reason that Sean Peyton, who is one of the best quarterback coaches and best offensive minds in our game, is saying, I'm going to pay this guy millions upon millions of dollars to be nowhere near my locker room. Wow. Wow. I mean, we knew it. Guys, when he got, when when it emerged that he was going to be cut and there was going to be an $85 million hit, we said then, Sean Payton was willing to let $85 million go to, to make sure this guy wasn't around. And in his building. And on top of it, it was pretty well known that Jared Stenham could run his offense better than Russell Wilson could. Think about that. By the way, Sean Payton still believes that right now. He does. He believes Bo Nix can run his offense better than Russell Wilson's. The reports of Wilson struggling with calling plays are indeed concerning, if accurate. However, there's optimism that the offensive scheme in Pittsburgh under new offensive coordinator Arthur Smith will better align with Wilson's strengths. Smith's playbook mirrors the style Wilson thrived in during his days with the Seattle Seahawks, emphasizing play action. Familiarity could potentially ignite Wilson's prowess on the field. It's it's very possible, okay? It's very possible that Arthur Smith's playbook's going to be friendlier but they they mentioned seattle this kind of thing was driving pete carroll crazy you know i mean it's it's not just it's not just sean payton it, it, it's nuts i i'm very interested to see how this plays out now arthur smith i do believe you know he had ryan Tannehill. And Ryan Tannehill is a pretty mobile quarterback. A lot of people don't think about that. He was a former wide receiver at Texas A&M before becoming a quarterback. I do believe that Arthur Smith's offense is going to allow for more ad-libbing. And maybe Russell Wilson will thrive in that. Maybe he will. Maybe he'll relaunch his career and next year he'll be the comeback player of the year or whatever. But, look, we're talking about two future Hall of Fame coaches, Pete Carroll and Sean Payton, and they both couldn't wait to get Wilson out of the building. And, and Omar Khan can see enough writing on the wall to say, let's take a look at Justin Fields, too. Which, by the way, he's probably not going to special teams. Thank God. That was going to be one of the worst ideas in the history of bad ideas. Wow. I I mean, it's crazy. About every two months, it's a new Russell Wilson 
something in and around Denver, in and around Seattle. I did one not too long ago. I mean, a Seattle uh, sports guy that covered the team. I mean, he was as scathing as this was. And that's in a different location. <laughs> Two different teams. Yeah, man. Good luck. I mean, really good luck. Better than Kenny Pickett. I ain't going to kid you about that. Mason Rudolph, though? Mm, I hope that doesn't bite the Steelers in the ass. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.